Good evening, and welcome to Weathersfield Talk. My name is Rick Gary. I'll be your host for this evening's program. Tonight we have a special guest we're going to interview. It's the new police chief in Weathersfield, Chief Rafael Medina. Chief, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for, thank you for having me. Well, we appreciate you coming on the air, introducing yourself to the town, and utilizing uh, Weathersfield Community Television, which is a great resource in town, and hopefully we'll see more of you on here over the years. Yes. All right. So what I'd like to do, Chief, is... Uh, just start by having you introduce yourself. The people in town don't know you, don't know your background. Maybe you could just spend a minute or two. Sure. Tell I'll, us about you. <laughs> sure, that'll be great. Um, just to let everyone know, I'm a, a 26-year veteran of law enforcement. Um, spent the majority of my career with the Connecticut State Police, close to 21, over 21 years. Wow. Um, in various assignments. I started out in the western part of the state, uh, Troop Bay and South Ferry, and then eventually I moved to the central portion of the state, and then um, Troop H in Hartford. Okay. But my career really took off in, in major crime. I spent over 12 years in major crime with Connecticut State Police. Oh, wow. Um, and then a two additional years in internal affairs as I rose through the ranks. So I have close to 14 years of wow. investigative experience um, administratively and criminally. Okay. Um, and then when I moved up to the ranks, uh, to the rank of lieutenant, I went up to Troop K in Colchester and, yep. and took over that. Um, and that's you know, really the basis of my career. And during that time, um, I obtained my master's degree. I'm married. I have two kids. Wonderful. Um, I still live in Hartford because when I retired from the state police in 2018, I went to the city of Hartford to be the oh. assistant chief of police. Oh, wow. Uh, where I spent the last three years and eight months prior to taking on this role here in Weathersfield. So you've done a lot of different. You've been in almost every aspect. Yes. It sounds like, you know, which is, uh, makes for a well-rounded career. It, it, it was a, you know, when they say when you have fun, your careers go by fast. Yeah. And the last 26 years have been the blur. Huh. Um, when you come to work enjoying your job and that right. atmosphere and helping people, because it's really about helping people and giving back to the community. Right. And when you're able to do that in different aspects, um, it, it, it's uh, rewarding. So when you worked in, uh, in the troops, Troop Age, you were working, those are the towns that don't have a police force, and they utilize the state police, correct? Yes. Uh, Troop A and South Ferry, um, that's, a, it's half and half, because you have Danbury, you have Waterbury. Okay. Uh, but you have towns like South Ferry, Oxford, right. Sherman. Those are towns that don't have uh, municipalities, okay. police departments. Um, and now when I was the commander of Troop K, we covered 12 different towns on the okay. eastern part. So I've been fortunate. I worked in all three districts, which means I worked in all three portions wow. of the state, from the west to the east. So Great. a lot of experience along the way. Wonderful. So you've had so you've had smaller town experience and the big city experience with Hartford and you know being in the Danbury area. Okay, uh, as you come in, so so how do you like it so far in Weathersfield? Oh, I love it. This do is you? a great town. It's a great okay. department, great men and women, and a great community that supports the police department. Good. Well, we like to hear that. <laughs> Good. So, um, what do you? You've only been here six months. Correct. But now coming into a town suburb like Weathersfield, which is on the border of Hartford. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you been surprised by anything? Are you, uh, you know, anything that being in the suburbs and being here that's different than what you've experienced? Or is it pretty much similar as being a, you know, a policeman? It's kind of the same. It's the same, but it's different because yeah. every town is unique and, mm -hmm. and policing one town or a city is different right. than the other. So you have to get to know it. Right. Um, right. That's the biggest thing. My career with the state police, I was fortunate, like I said, to do smaller towns. But I also worked in bigger troops. I worked at Troop G in Bridgeport oh, okay. and Troop H in Hartford, which yep. are primarily highway. Right. Um, but then when you go to Troop K or Troop A or Troop F, where I was at, those have towns. Now you're in the town. And then going to the city portion of it, being with Hartford, yep. now you're learning that big city policing, right. compact area, community-based right. policing. And so when you come to a town like Weathersfield, which abuts Hartford, um, and, 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 and and I should throw that throw this in here as well, is that I grew up in the city of Bridgeport. That's where I was born oh, and raised. Okay. But I lived in South Windsor for over 17 years when I moved up here. So okay. living in both type of environments, policing right. in both type, type of environments, coming here, it's just, okay, how do we make our PD fit with our community? What are the needs of right. our town? And how do we get to that point? And that's what we're working on. Good. Well, that kind of segues into, um, and for those of you that don't know, uh, in January of 2022, a report was done by a consulting a group of consultants uh, to interview the police force, the members of the police department in Weathersfield, to gauge where we are. Correct. What's good, what's bad, 
what's missing, what needs to be done. And I read the whole report. It's available, for those who don't know, it's available on the town website. You go to the department's police and it's right there on the, on the town's website. You can read the whole report. Uh, what a great tool for you, I would imagine, being a new chief, to have this amazing report from the people who are reporting to you, people that work with you. Right. It's, it's, it's a, a, a great tool, a, a nice foundation to start with. Uh, when I first came to Weathersfield to the police department, and I'm still doing to this day, I, I do one-on-ones with the officers, I do ride-alongs, trying to get to know them, get okay. to know their background, and get to understand the issues or concerns of the, of the, of the police department, then reviewing the policies and reviewing the um, internal affairs investigation and disciplinary okay. history. I said, well, something needs to be done because um, not everyone truly wants to give you all the information because they don't know right. if they can trust you or not. So sure. why can't we do it where we do a type of study, which when we were in Harford, when I was in Harford, we did the same exact thing. Okay. So it's anonymous. They, they and this report was anonymous? It's anonymous. Okay. Uh, we don't have, I don't have access to the data. That's the ownership of the, the universities. Um, but they, they interviewed, they actually, they sent out the survey. They did one-on-one -on -one interviews, um, not just with the police officers, but also with department heads and oh, members okay. of the community yep. um, and how we interact with them and how we interact with each other. And right. then we have this report with the 30 recommendations now that we can start looking at based on the feedback of my officers right. to move this department forward. Yeah, what, a, what, a great, what a great tool. And I read the report. They're very, uh, there's a lot of details. Yes. Right? So they interviewed everybody, basically. They interviewed the ones who were or wanted to. Who wanted, wanted to, to. Okay. Yes. Um, so I read the report, and there were some good and some bad. Correct. And I don't want to say bad, but r room for improvement. Things to work on. For things to work on and some, uh, some good stuff. I'm, I just want to, I always like to, you know, mention some of the good things. And it seems like the police officers in Wethersfield are happy to be police officers in Wethersfield and have a decent morale yes. with each other. Yes. There's a, there's a good cohesion there, mm -hmm. it seems like. Um, obviously, there were, some, there were some issues that they felt could be addressed, like uh, some training. They need more training. A little bit of disparity and reprimand is mm -hmm. one I read. They were concerned about the staffing level. Correct. And maybe some of the officers didn't feel like their opinion uh, was being taken seriously. So maybe we can talk about a couple of these and what you think should be done or what, how you address those types of things. So is there any of them in particular that, you know, with those issues that you feel is easy to address or, you know, that uh, it's probably not that easy? They have their little nuances yeah. to them, right. but we'll start with we'll start right to the heart of it: yeah. the discipline, yep. disparity. Uh, when I first came to the police department, the, my first two weeks there, as I sat down and read the last two years of internal affairs investigations, yep. and tried to understand what the violation was and what was the discipline that was was okay. given out, if there was, right, um, and trying to find out where that was coming from. And identified early on that the department didn't have a standard or code of conduct where there was ranges for certain types of violation of policy. Right. So I immediately started working with the union. We put a committee together, and we're still working on it to this day. But we're clear. We're near completion where now the membership needs to vote on okay. that code of conduct. So now it's it, it's a standard Good. for me to follow. Right. So it's fair. It's concise. You know, yep. there's no deviation from it. Right. It holds me to a standard. Right. You know, when there's not one, then you have that free reign. Yes. And, and then, then some individuals might feel like they're being and whether it's differently. In, whether it's intended or not, not. right? Yeah. The idea that you don't have a standard, it may, you know, it doesn't matter that you intend it or not. It, it's just not, there's not a book to go to and say, boy, exactly. we need to, yeah. And when someone feels that way, then perception is reality. Yes. Okay. Well, that's important, too, because, you know, I don't care if you're police officers or brother and sister. If you're not getting the same punishment for the same crime, <laughs> boy, do you notice, right? Exactly, and that spreads okay. in a small police department like this. Right. And that's why we need to get that standard in place. And that was one of the first things we started working yep. on when I first got here, after reviewing those IAs and sitting down and listening to my officers yep. and saying, okay, hey, this is, this is an issue, and this is where right. we're getting back to where they feel like they're not being listened to. Okay. While well, I'm listening. Yeah. And that's the reason why it is. This is because of me listening to them is what this, right. uh, um, made me move forward with getting this report done. Okay. Now, who's working on? So, when you do something like that, uh, where you're looking at um, disciplinary procedures, mm -hmm. who's is it? You working with, uh, like the town manager, working with different people to kind of come up, or is it you put up something and then it gets voted on? 
Got the code of conduct? Yeah, the code of conduct. I have the union. I, I had the union and, and my command staff, two of my commanders yep. um, and two members of the union. They formed a okay. committee to come up with it jointly and then present it to me. Okay. Um, utilizing other examples from other police departments um, that are in place already um, yep. that can hold up the scrutiny. Because right. remember, it, it's going to be scrutinized. Oh, absolutely. And it's going to be yeah. tested, but you have to be fair, consistent, and firm hmm. um, equally across the board. And that's right. what this it, it, it actually identifies for the officers. Well, if you do something here, this is what's going to be. Right. Um, and that way we're held to that standard. Everyone, top down. And just so at home, again, uh, the, the town website has on the town's website, on the police department's page, you can look at the internal affairs. There's a summary of all internal affairs uh, decisions that were made, you know, complaints and the resolution. Not in detail, no. but at least you can see uh, how many internal affairs uh, issues there were, whether it was from a citizen or someone else, and whether it was an exoneration or maybe some, there was some discipline. So uh, there, is, there is information on the town's website that you're well, you know, people are welcome to look at. Because obviously you want to be, um, you want people to, you, know, you don't feel like you're hiding anything. No, we want to be transparent, and that's the other Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And that's another thing we're bringing here. We're going to start making it more transparent and trying to develop our website and put more information out to the community saying exactly what we're doing. Um, and that's, um, that's coming okay. in the future. Oh, um, good. I know that um, having a communication, a person in charge of communications, right? I think Weathersfield had one, a communications officer who, uh, in the past, it might have been years ago. It wouldn't be in the past. Yeah, um, who would be kind of in charge of press releases and Correct. making sure that there's information getting out all mm -hmm. the time. Uh, the fire department has one. Mm -hmm. So that's important too, that there's good information getting out there. It is, and when, when we publish our new organizational chart, you'll see that I created a PIO team. Yep. That now it's gonna be headed up by our lieutenant, and it's gonna be a small team that he's putting together now to handle social media. We'll be handling news releases, okay. and to get it out there and make sure we handle, you know, uh, that we hit all the points, the news outlets, social media, and then for the big briefings if need be. So anything else from that report? Uh, that, now the staff, let's go over to staffing level. Mm -hmm. Are we fully staffed right now or, or no? We are not. We are not. We are not. Okay. I am budgeted for 49, but come fiscal year, starting July 1, I'll be budgeted for 51. Okay. Um, based on some of the recommendations I presented to the town manager and the council, you know, I was fortunate enough that you know, they're, they budgeted for me to have a second in command, a captain, now I can hire. Okay. That's outside the union. That's the buffer again yep. to help us work with the union and also two additional officers. Um, so where are we at now in staffing for officers? We're at right now, we're supposed to be at 49. We're at 48. We're going to be at 47 shortly. Okay. So we're and down to bring it up to 51 is the recommended. That's the recommended coming to, uh, come July 1. But when I first got here, we were down to 41. Really? So I've hired, we've hired, oh. I, say, I say we well, yeah. as a department because it's not my department, it's yeah. my team's department. Um, we've hired six. Oh, okay. Um, and these are all fully uh, accredited officers? Laterals, yes, certified officers. Okay, okay. Because we, a lot of towns, I don't know, they're not doing the new officer training anymore, right? It's difficult to... We want to. Yeah. I mean, I'd prefer to have a new officer come in who comes bottom up and works their way through the department. But it's finding the qualified candidate okay. in today's day and age. And unfortunately, we are all in the same predicament based right. on various factors that have happened um, to get that qualified officer. So all the towns are fighting for those Everyone's fighting for candidates. the best candidate. <laughs> <laughs> so Weathersfield, ha that's another thing. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see anything at in the report, or maybe I missed it, about you know, if the officers are happy with uh, you know, if the pay scale and the benefits and, and the working conditions, right? So that's important, too. because. If you want to attract good officers to the town, you have to have all that. You yeah. do, and that's why you don't see that as an issue in the report, because they do recognize, and we recognize that it's a great town to work for. Okay. And that's why I'm fortunate to have all those laterals who want to come here. Right. They perform, they've done that job in other environments, they yeah. understand it, and when they come here, they're happy to be here. Good, good. Well, that's, and that's the thing, I, you know, when a report like this comes out, a lot of times everybody focuses on the negative, right? Mm -hmm. And, but there is a lot of positive in there. There is a lot. There right? is a lot. So, uh, and I encourage people to read it. Uh, it is a really, it was a really well done report, I think, at least in my opinion. Uh, any other issues in the report that you, that you feel you're addressing immediately or that you want to discuss? 
We, we, there's a lot that we've, I've formed committees now based off this report. Okay. Um, we're looking at doing, uh, we're putting together a scheduling committee to look at the schedule that they work okay. for more work-life balance, okay. um, which you saw in there. Yeah, that was in there, staffing, yes. With um, staffing issues, um, to session planning. Okay. Um, as a small agency like this, we have to figure out how, or I have to, I need to figure out how with my command staff, how we give everybody an opportunity right. to either do something different at the patrol level or, or at the right. detective, or if they want to move up as a supervisor, how we get them to that point. Okay. Um, so we're looking at that, and that ties into the training and how we, we provide the training. And it doesn't stop there. It, start, start, it goes up to my, my lieutenants. Okay. Um, and get in providing them with command level training or executive level training right. and hopefully someday that you know they could become a chief themselves right. uh, so what is the what is the breakdown uh, roughly of how many patrol officers detectives and that kind of thing is it like how many patrol officers are there in Weathersfield approximately of the 49 that we have or 48 23 23 are patrol officers correct and then you have detectives yes approximately seven seven okay and then the rest are either uh, are uh, administrative or uh, command leaders or something. Well, we have dare officers, right? So we have th the two dare officers. Um, we have a court liaison officer, okay. um, an evidence officer, yeah. and then you have the sergeant's rank of seven, and then the four lieutenants and myself. So okay, okay. All right. Those are things, you know, it's funny, I just came to my head because I never, I never knew what that breakdown was. So there's really, so that's where the staffing level gets in, right? So you have 23 patrol officers mm -hmm. who have to cover the town 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Correct. Right? So I could see where that would be uh, an issue. And then there, the private duty is a totally volunteer, voluntary for road duty or for anything else. How, sometimes it is and sometimes it, it isn't, depending okay. on the nature of the road job. Okay. If it's an emergency situation where we have to close a road, then uh -huh. it needs to be filled and sometimes right. they get ordered in for it. Okay. But that's, uh, but for the private duty, that's all, uh, you know, private, uh, volunteer, volunteer. It is. They sign yeah. up for it and they volunteer for it. And okay. we're fortunate to have the supernumeraries as well. Okay. That fill those jobs. Oh, good. So they take up a bulk of the those road jobs, which is good, so it helps with that work-life balance so they don't order in for those. Great. Um, we don't have, you know, we're not going to be here all night, so, <laughs> you know, we could talk about that report all night, I'm sure. Yes. Um, but I do urge everyone at home to uh, to read it uh, for themselves. So I know I want to kind of change over to something that a lot of people, I'm not, I'm on Facebook, but I'm not on there a lot, but mm -hmm. when it comes to the car break-ins and the uh, and the other petty crimes that are happening, and it's not just Weathersfield. It, it's a rash, the, the uh, mm -hmm. catalytic converters, all that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are very concerned about that in Weathersfield. It's a big topic of discussion, and I'm sure it's something you think about and work on. Yes. So I don't know if you can uh, comment on that. There's a couple of things that I, I, you know, the catalytic converter thefts, but you also have these individuals who are walking into retail stores and grabbing items and walking oh, the down. Grab -and the grab-and-goes. Yeah. that we. You have to remember, we're in between 91 yep. and the Berlin Turnpike. Right. Easy access on and off on the highways, yep. um, which are main points for people to come into town and do what they want to do and get back right. on the highway. So what I'm teaching my command staff now is, based on our report writing system, to do crime mapping. Okay. So we can start determining the days and the time of day oh, to see if and the patterns. locations right. where we're experiencing these crimes. And let's start thinking about ways outside the box to deploy our resources and start tackling that. Okay. It's not just a nine to five job or whatever sure. shift that you have. Let's see, well, we're, we have additional officers on a certain day. Let's put a little task force together. We know on a Wednesday at four o'clock in the afternoon, we're getting hit with Cadillac converters on a Ridge Road. Yep. Well, let's go stage on Ridge Road, see okay. if anything comes through. But we have to start utilizing our data, our resources that we have there. Right. And when I was with the state police, I was fortunate to learn the ins and outs of the next gen system. Okay. So you're able to do that, and that's what we have here. And now I'm showing them. These are, it's so here. So this is that's a data utilizing. collection system. Yes. And, and, okay. Mm -hmm. So our calls for service and the natures of the calls go into that system, and you're able to map it out. And they can bring up the map of the town, and we can have little pinpoints, and then we start yeah. figuring out. All right. Let's see the date, time, and right. date a week. And it's tough. I know it's um, for a lot of people. It's unnerving knowing that there's these people walking around at night, mm -hmm. checking doors or going to this and doing that. Um, but there's some things that people can do uh, to help protect themselves, correct? Correct. 
What would some of those uh, well, if you have suggestions? A, <laughs> suggestions would be, so if you have a garage, put your car, your car in the garage and shut the garage door. <laughs> um, uh, two, don't leave your doors unlocked because right. that's easy access. You don't leave your keys in the car, especially if you have a fob, because yes. then you're not going to just lose an item in the car. You're going to lose the car itself. And, and don't leave items in plain view that are of value, encouraging someone to smash and grab and go. Right. Um, and, and, and then report any activity that you feel is, is yeah. um, of nefarious nature. Because everybody has cameras now, it seems like, yeah, everyone house, does. right? Mm -hmm. So if you see that person walking around, they should call you or call the uh, department, just say, hey, this, I have this, video. this person was Here in my yard last night walking around or was checking my car doors. Exactly. Okay. Yep, I, yep. Know, I know those are difficult crimes to solve, let's say, mm -hmm. because it's night, typically you can't see their face, whatever, but it's still helpful information, right, to know what neighborhoods in and know what they're doing and all this stuff helps. Well, you, you, you identify the patterns and then you work with the surrounding towns Okay. because they have the same issues right. and usually it's the same group working right. together. And when you find one, you get the other two, three, or five. But we need that little break, and that's where that comes from, those, the videos. Uh, one of the other things that's been a big topic in Connecticut uh, recently is the juvenile uh, detention, right? Are we letting juveniles go? Are we putting, you know, what do we do? And, and so when, if, if a juvenile is caught, I mean, it's out of your control, right? It's the judicial system of what they do with them, correct? There's nothing you can... We issue the summons, turn right. them over to their parents, and then... Uh, right. Uh, even with the repeat offenders, this is another thing I've heard over and over again, you know. These kids are repeat offenders and this and that, but it's still... Right, they fall under the juvenile court system or the juvenile system, and there's only so much. There's almost so much we can do. Right. All right. Now, another, another issue, and I, I live near the Ridge Road. And not too long ago, uh, a woman was killed when someone went through a stop sign. Correct. And uh, that seems to be a big issue as well, mm -hmm. the running of stop signs. I don't know if there's anything you can even do about that, or is there anything? Well, on a side note to that, yeah. today we served the arrest warrant for that individual. Oh, did you? Yes, so he was okay. arrested today for the, uh, the uh, vehicular manslaughter charge. So okay. that case is closed. He was arrested, and he'll be in the judicial system starting okay. this afternoon, he was. Um, when it comes, we really need the public to right. tell us you know, where these issues are, just speeding, the stop signs, the red lights. Um, and then with the new addition of bodies that are two, one of them, I want to make a traffic unit officer to go out and do street surveys, to sit in those areas where we have those issues, okay. do enforcement, and then work with the town engineer to see what we can do, uh -huh. if need be, on that side. Right. Uh, outside of the enforcement. You know, okay. some roads might need a speed bump, so forth, but we have to work with him. Okay. But those are some things that we're looking at. Uh, I just had some. Oh, body cameras. That was another issue I wanted to talk about. Do we have body cameras in Weathersfield? Yes, we do. Okay. And these are all patrol officers wear them at all times during the patrol? Or is this a selective? Or where, where are we at right now? Well, where we were, right. the town police department had 35 body worn cameras. Okay. Um, we just put in the capital budget because our, our contract ran out. There, oh, there, there are three year life on the cameras. There are okay. five right wow. now. Okay. So we just purchased cameras. They're going to be coming in for every single officer, to include myself, okay. um, to be warned whenever okay. you're interacting with the public. Right. Um, so they have that. We have that. It protects them. It protects us. It protects sure. the community. Absolutely. Um, it's a great tool. And it's a great resource. And you know, 35 cameras being used over and over, I they burn out. 50. Yeah. You know, hopefully we get five, six years out so of. So you have some spares right. you can so put we, in exactly. Now, we can huh? start moving, not spend money all the time. When an officer goes out, obviously the camera's not running all the time. Is it? It's buffering. It's running all the it time. It is buffering all the time. Once you turn it on, it's buffering. So So it stays on the whole time they're on patrol? Yes. Okay. All right. Because I, I know there was, uh, you know, you see these cases nationwide that sometimes, oh, the camera was off. Mm -hmm. You know. So does the officer have the ability to turn it on and off? Yes. Okay. But when they, per policy, when you leave the building, it's on. Okay. Inside the building, privacy is issue. But once you're yeah. out there, it's buffering. Mm -hmm. So when you hit the record button, it'll back up. 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. So it's capturing video without sound, and then the video, the sound will kick in okay. at the time, at they, that time, time when they push the button. Okay. Now, body cameras, I believe, are great. Uh, they've been a great asset. They're a huge asset. You know, um, some people, you know, think they aren't, but I think uh, we've seen a lot of, uh, you know, look, every profession has issues. There's, police are no different than anyone else. Sometimes something happens, 
and you, you're able now to at least deal with it, knowing the facts. So I think that's important. Um, what are some, do you see anything you think needs changing right away or some changes you think you'd like to make that you can talk about? Or do you, you know, other than the ones we've talked about, do you see anything else that you think is an important thing to change or to, that you might, uh, a new policy or a new something that you might uh, be, you know, introducing? What I'm trying to do is have our officers more out in the community. Okay. And when I mean out in the community, it's not in the car. Right. I want them out visibly walking around or talking. Um, so right now I'm looking at getting more bikes for bike patrol. Oh, okay. We have eight bike certified officers, so when we're heavy on the shift, have them riding their bikes around over Weathersfield or certain areas of town, other areas where we're out there and just interacting right. with people. Okay. Um, I'm looking at having creating a community engagement um, team. Okay. where we have point of contacts, community leaders in town throughout the various areas. Right. Um, so keep us in the know what's going on in the different right. areas of town. Because okay. um, each, each portion of the town has a different, unique uh, set of uh, um, our citizens. And then looking at getting a chaplain's group oh, okay. for the PD, yep. um, faith-based leaders who can talk to our officers and they have someone to speak to. Right. Um, and just being out there. Just another resource. To another resource. Well, the fire department has that, a chaplain officer, so yeah, it makes sense. And, and as a whole, um, you know, being out there in the community and understanding the buildings we're going into, right. especially in today's day and age with these active shooters. Right. As you see them, you know, I want my officers in the schools. We're fortunate enough to have two school resource officers. So you have two school resource officers. Do. So I know one's always at the high school, right? And one's at the middle school. Oh, okay. I didn't know So that. we have them. Okay. And that's what I want. And I want my officers on patrol walking to school. So, and, right. and look at training for them and, you know, our, right. our school leaders or the, um, department heads and what to do during an active shooter situation. So, Well, and it's also, I think that uh, the school resource officer, one of the, you know, obviously it's good having an officer in a school, but I think the relationships that they build with the students is so important. It's huge. Right? Because they see you know, an officer every day who's not a bad guy, who's not out yeah. to hurt them, who's not, right? He's the guy that's there to help. I, I go to the high school and I walk around with Officer Knapp, and they're like, hi, yeah. Officer Knapp, how are you doing today? <laughs> and it's that bond that you, you, it comes over time, and you see that yep. they're happy to see him. He takes right. great joy in it, and it, it works <laughs> yes, both he ways. Does. Yes, you know? I know Officer Knapp well, and uh, he's a perfect candidate for the job. <laughs> <laughs> he is <laughs> great with those, the students. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We'll give a little shout-out to Officer Knapp on we that will. one. Yeah, Not Manny, that the other officers aren't good, but they are. I know Officer Knapp well, and, and uh, he definitely loves his job. He does. <laughs> That's great. Um, so as we go forward, uh, you've got you know, some staffing that you're going to do. Mm -hmm. You've got some great uh, policies you're going to put in place. I think, I mean, to me, this sounds positive. Um, yourself, uh, are you gonna, have you been going out and meeting the community and meeting leaders and doing that? Uh, oh, I do. My, my calendar is quite jam-packed. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I think my first uh, five months here, I had 156 wow. uh, meetings with different various leaders, department right. heads, community leaders. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm right now doing, the, I'm going out and meeting all the leaders of the churches in town, Okay. Um, bringing them in, um, the schools, the principals, everyone right. who is a stakeholder in this town. Okay. And even just driving around and getting out and talk to people. Right. They're like, hey, chief, how are you doing? They yeah. see me and, it's, and you start building about, building that rapport and that, and that bond because we need that. And, Good. and I'm not going to ask my officers to do something I'm not doing myself. Sure. No, I, I think that's important all the time. I mean, I met you marching in the Irish parade. So, <laughs> so you were out there uh, marching with the rest of us uh, non-Irishmen, <laughs> um, which was great. So I think we're coming close uh, to our uh, time. We didn't want to keep this long. This is kind of an introduction. We're hoping it's not the last time you come on here. Maybe, gotcha. get, you know, maybe every once in a while a little update, see mm -hmm. what's going on, talk to the community. Or if you ever want uh, to come on here because you have an issue you want to discuss, we're always here for you. That would uh, be great. Yeah. Anything you want to close with? No, I thank you for having me. I'm, yeah. I'm happy to be here, and I'm excited to see what we do with the state uh, the department moving forward here in town. Hey, well, we're happy too. So I want to thank uh, Chief Medina for coming on here. Uh, I think it's important for all of our town leaders uh, and department heads and anyone uh, in, a, in a position uh, of, of authority in the town to come on and talk to, to the people in town and let them know what's happening, be fully transparent. And uh, I think it helps build that relationship. So uh, again, I urge you to go to the town's website, read the report, 
uh, for yourself. Uh, read the good and, and, the, and the issues that need addressing. The, the chief is obviously working on addressing them. And uh, we're going to do more shows, uh, whether she'll talk, we're going to have more people on. And we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time we're on the air. Good night.